It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Hey, we got a great podcast for you today to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about your financial advisor. Is he or she a nice guy that just doesn't cut it? We're going to tell you the important things your financial advisor should be doing for you. And if they're not, time to move on. We're going to talk about some of the financial propaganda out there this week, some of the more offensive headlines that you need to be aware of, things you need to be doing with your portfolio, everything from bond funds. There's a lot of dangerous things going on there that you need to be aware of with your portfolio. We're going to talk about the unnecessary or irrational pessimism going on right now with the economy and the market, how it's unjustified. Don't get sucked into it. How to protect your portfolio against the financial propaganda out there. And we have our mailbag section today. Where we're going to talk about what's going on with the markets, the election, Brexit. What do you need to be doing with your portfolio? And we're going to talk about those pesky mandatory distributions. All your retirement accounts are ticking tax time bombs. We're going to tell you how to be proactive and utilize strategies to lessen taxes on your portfolio. So check it out. We've got a great show. Bob, you know, we so often see advisors that do less than a stellar job, to say the least. But folks continue to work with these people simply because they like them on a personal level. So I thought we could discuss why it's crucial you're receiving the help and advice you really need as opposed to just maintaining a financial relationship strictly for personal reasons. Hey, Rod, it's not uncommon. You know, one thing that I hear a lot from newer clients that come in to see us is my portfolio really hasn't done that well for the last several years, but you know, he's a really nice advisor, so I haven't wanted to make a change. Yes, and this is something that you need to evaluate over time, right? I mean, the key is if you're working with a financial professional, and it doesn't have to be every year, your markets go up and down, but you really got to make sure that your money is growing over time because the whole idea is you want to live on it later. So that's kind of an important metric <laughs> when you're thinking about your finances. Well, you know, Ryan, as I talked about last week in the market update, it's one of those rare years where everything and I mean everything in a diversified portfolio, is showing a positive return. Almost everything's up double digits this year. So you're not making any money. You might be in something that's really wrong. Yeah, and it's not like every year, like I was saying before, things have to go up. But if they don't go up, you need to know why too, right? Because I mean, the reason could be something like, to your point, Bob, everything's up this year. What if you're paying too much in fees? And those fees are eating away at your return. I think you need to understand why your performance is up or down in any given year. Well, I think it's not just that. It's, uh, you know, recently we, we had a new client come in and they had a majority of their portfolio in what we call non traded REITs, where, first of all, they report these things as having no price change. And then when you do a little research, you find out they're down 30, 40, 50%. Right. So a lot of times the statement doesn't even tell you you're down on your investments. That's like a very, very scary place to be. You know, another thing that we hear a lot is I don't usually understand much of what they're telling me. And I'm always really confused after we meet. But I guess money just isn't really my thing. Plus, our kids were in school together. Hmm. That sounds really bad, right? I mean, first of all, I think it's very important that you know what you own. And more importantly, you know why you own it, because otherwise you're not going to be able to handle the long term volatility of of investments. I mean, what are some of the reasons why your advisor doesn't want you to understand, right? Well, I think first off, a lot of times they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> if you had to be, you know, honest or real about it. In fact, I was talking to my friend's father the other day and he's like, I just sat down with my financial guy because he knows I'm in the financial world. And he says, oh, those meetings are the worst. He just goes on and on about this, that, and the other thing. My eyes start to glaze over. And to me, that's a real problem. <laughs> you know, That's not the relationship you should have with your financial person. You really need to understand what they're telling you. Here's a rule of thumb. If you're thinking about your portfolio right now and you can't explain it to your grandson or your nine-year-old daughter in less than five seconds, then you don't understand what you own. Yes, it should. I mean, we have a lot of fancy verbiage in our industry, but if it's not intuitive, it's not common sense, you really shouldn't be doing it. Uh, which goes to another thing we hear all the time, Bob, when you hear complaints about people's advisors, is we never get together for reviews 
and I rarely get my phone calls returned, but I know they're really busy. Besides, she worked with my dad for years, so I assume I'm being taken care of. That's a red flag. Well, that's a double whammy. First of all, you inherited a bad advisor, and secondly, you know, they're not getting any service. And, you know, Ry, we've done a lot of surveys over the year, but one of the industry surveys that just sticks in my mind all the time is the number one characteristic of the financial services industry is a lack of service. Well, you know, it's awful because we charge fees. <laughs> so <laughs> you might not know you're being charged fees, but if you don't have someone who's earning those fees and giving you advice, man, that is a lousy deal, Bob, if I've ever seen one. It really is. And I mean, it, the, the thing is service is communication. And some people don't want to hear from you every single day, and that's fine. But you want to make sure that you have an advisor who takes your interest to heart and is not taking discretion. And, you know, that's a fancy way of saying, Rye, they have to call you first before they do anything in your portfolio. That's very critical. And to me, if you're not sitting down with your advisor at least once a year to review your goals, that's crazy because your life is changing all the time and adjustments have to be made. I mean, look, markets are changing. Tax laws change. Your situation's changing. It's always in motion. So if there's no way for you to recalibrate at least every 12 months, odds are there's a lot of things in your portfolio you're really missing that you should be doing proactively. You know, if you're sitting there right now thinking, well, what do I care if I hear from anybody? My portfolio's going up. My statement's at a new high. You know, everything's going really, really well. Well, you know what? A rising tide lifts all ships, right? What happens when the tide goes out? The old famous Warren Buffett quote, when the tide goes out, you can see who's been swimming naked, and you could be swimming naked right now and have no idea. And that's why I really, when it comes to financial planning, especially the investment component to your portfolio, it's all about being proactive, not reactive. Because when the tide goes out, to your point, Bob, it's already too late. You've already missed the boat, no pun intended. So I think right now, more than ever, when things are going well, that's the best time to sit down and reevaluate things. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bullish.com for a link. Time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call up the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So, Bob, what did you find out there in the horrid world of financial propaganda this past week or even some good news? I don't know. What's, hap what's happening in the world on this day? What's happening? In the first world? of all, Rye, I just want to assure you, I've never met a rich pessimist, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Duly noted. That's true, right? If pessimism doesn't pay, it could be a good t-shirt. I, I like it. Paying capital management. Pessimism doesn't pay. <laughs> I'll buy that t-shirt every day of the week. But <laughs> you know, this headline says, stock market's hitting all-time record highs. S&P 500 exceeded the high last week, as we predicted on the show. But what's happening is more and more people are becoming bearish. More professional money managers are becoming bearish. Hedge funds have the least amount of money invested in the stock market in years. You have 27% um, of money managers responding to Barron's fall. Big money poll call themselves bullish where everybody else is down uh, and bearish. So it's a uh, fact it's the lowest percentage of bulls in more than 20 years, right? And you know well, what Barron said about all that information? What's it's that? a really good sign for the stock market. <laughs> Sounds so counterintuitive, but it's true. And in fact, I wrote in my notes this week, pessimism is the best kind of optimism for stocks. So counterintuitively, when we hear bad news, we hear everybody's really negative, that's actually always the best time to buy. And you know, going back to what you just said, Bobby, I mean, a lot of these indicators, when people get this negative, 
usually it's followed by a big move up in the stock market, which sounds so counterintuitive, but statistically, that's the way it works. Yeah, there's a group called Bespoke, and they said that when the public has viewed a new high in the market with skepticism, in other words, there are more people betting on the downside than the upside, the S&P has seen gains over the next year, not once in a while, Rye, every single time. And if we go back to 1987, the S&P was higher a year later with the lowest one-year return, 4.5%, with the biggest gain of 20%. Wow. So there are great odds. 100% of the time, when things are this pessimistic, it's really good for stocks. Go figure. And it kind of makes sense, though. You know, we look at all the economic data right now. You have the lowest unemployment we've had in 50 years, which is just amazing. Wages are going up. If you look at the American household, debt service is at all-time lows. So that means people right now are in some of the best shape they've ever been before. And in America, the consumer drives the economy. And if the consumer's in good shape, and they're in pretty good shape right now, that's a really good sign. And I think you don't hear enough about that in the media right now. But you know, right, and that's the problem. It's the media. I had dinner with a very good client last night, and he's got a big uh, HVAC business. And he's saying, oh, my goodness, you know, they got impeachment. We've got manufacturing slow and consumer spending looks like it's on the edge of, uh, you know, going backwards. He said, you know, the business cycle may end. This has been going on a long time. He said, I'm really getting worried. And I said, oh, yeah, that's, I understand that. You know, it's a lot of things to be concerned about. By the way, how's your firm doing this year? Oh, we just had a record month. We had a record year. It's the best year we've ever had in the history of our company or our company's 50 years old. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, it's like things are so good. People don't realize it. It's a cognitive dissonance of some sort, right? Where it's like, oh, yeah, my business is doing great, but the world's going to end tomorrow. So, like, where's <laughs> – it's the, yeah, it's amazing the, the different attitude we have towards our personal lives and what's going on in our economy or in our world versus what we hear in the media. It's just a big disconnect right now. And, again, that's probably going to be a very, very optimistic sign for what's to come here over the next 12, 24 months. So true, right? So what else did you find out there in the world of financial propaganda? Well, I found a very interesting article this week, Bob, about our beloved bond funds. Or if you listen to this show, you know we don't love bond funds. The article is entitled, Bond Funds Learn to Exploit Rating System to Buy Riskier Debt. And this is something we've talked about a lot, is these bond funds, because the manager is desperate to find bonds, is buying riskier and riskier paper to put into these portfolios. Well, you know why they do that, Rye, right? is because when you take in the consideration how much the manager charges for their advice and then the advisor's charging for their advice, the yield on the portfolio is less than the fees you're paying. And last I checked, the reason you invest in bonds is to get yield, it's to get income. Right. And what we're seeing right now, because so much money is going into the bond market and investors are buying bond funds at some of the highest levels historically ever, uh, you know, these managers are forced to find paper to buy. And the problem is when you own a bond fund, you don't see what's inside of that bond fund. You just see you own a share of this mutual fund that invests in bonds. And odds are there's probably a lot of risky paper in there. We always talk about back in the day, all these mutual funds that owned Puerto Rico bonds. And unless you've been li living under a rock, Puerto Rico bonds became a very bad investment very quickly. You know, none of those low quality bonds are a problem, Ryan, until the market turns. And when the market turns, everybody tries to run for the eggs at the same time. It's like yelling fire in a theater. And when you have to sell, that's the problem for these poor money managers that manage these bond funds. They can't take a sell order and say, okay, I'm going to work the price and get you the best price in the bond over a week or two. They got to sell right now, today, this minute. And everybody else knows it. So when there's everybody selling and nobody buying, what do you think happens to the price? They're going to go down a lot more than you think, and that's the problem, right? You're going to own, if you're going to own bonds in your portfolio, that's supposed to be safety in your portfolio. But the problem is these bond funds are going to have the same volatility or risk as your stock portfolio, and that's just counterintuitive because if you're going to own stocks, you're going to take risk there. You need a place to offset that risk in your portfolio. And the problem is these bond funds don't offer that protection. It's like you're sitting on a time bomb here and you don't even know it. Yeah, I mean, even worse, right? Because when you do have a panic in the bond market, the only thing that can be sold are high quality bonds. It's the only thing anybody will buy from you. All that low quality stuff that they're buying now that they're reaching for yield with your money, there's no bid for that. There's no price for that. So what happens is when everybody panics out of the fund and you're still in it, you're stuck with low quality paper, low quality investments. All the high quality investments have been sold. 
So when it comes time to recover, you're not even in a position to recover. So it's a head you lose, tails you lose. You know what? Don't be a loser. Don't own bond funds. <laughs> the, the word of Bob. Bob has spoken. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. And if you ever have a question that you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us questions directly. Simply email us at questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. If it's a really good question, Bob and I will answer it right here on the show. And just like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving, to help us with questions today. Hey, Dan. How's it going, man? Hello, Ryan and Bob. I'm doing well. I'm currently training up for a 5K that I'm running next weekend, which is a great way to work off all that candy that I had on Thursday. <laughs> all right. <laughs> What's your, uh, what time are you shooting for? Ooh, uh, this is actually my first ever 5K, so the goal this time is just to finish it. <laughs> That's a good goal. All right. <laughs> and then I'll worry about timing Finishing for the future ones. Finishing is a great goal. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we will have to get a uh, result next week. So I will definitely you. give you the update. All right. We got some great questions on the mailback today. Our first one is from Jake in Patterson, New Jersey. And Jake is asking something that I'm sure a lot of people are worried about. He says, Bob, with all the headlines about Brexit and my concerns about the upcoming midterm elections, what actions should I be taking in my portfolio to protect myself? You know, Jake, if I had a nickel for every time a client or somebody who uh, knows I'm in the investment business asked me about Brexit or about the presidential election, you know, I wouldn't be doing a radio show anymore. I'd be uh, sitting on my yacht in Monte Carlo. It's like everybody's concerned about it. Everybody's focusing on it. But you know, first thing, just think about Brexit. They voted on this thing three years ago. What difference has it made in your financial life? If anything, you're wealthier, right? Your portfolio has gone up in value. Your real estate has gone up in value. So as we can see, Brexit, whatever the heck it means today, really hasn't had much of an impact. And then the presidential election the, you know, the Senate's and the, and the House, how's that all going to go? Well, let's look over your lifetime. You know, we've been in a raging bull market your entire life. Believe it or not, the market's never been higher than in any time in your life than it is right now. So over your lifetime, how many Democrats, how many Republicans, how many Libertarians have been president, senator, representative? You know what? It doesn't matter who sits in Washington, Jake, in terms of making money in, in the market. But yeah. Here's the thing, Rye. You know, who has a crystal ball that can predict what's going to happen with Brexit, what's going to happen with the presidential election? Who knows what's going to happen? Who well, has that crystal ball? Unfortunately, my crystal ball broke several years ago, about 20 years ago, and I got in the business. So it's been no help ever since. And to your point, Bob, right, no one really knows. And I think the big thing here is I always go back to the Warren Buffett playbook. I've never delayed a business decision because what's going on in Capitol Hill, because the reality of it is it's the biggest bureaucracy in the world. So any effects that you think it's going to have over your portfolio, it's just too complex to figure out if it does, when it does. And if you look at it historically, it doesn't really matter who's in office. It's almost split how the market's done under you know either leadership from the Democratic or the Republican Party. I would almost argue you need to ignore politics to build the right portfolio. It's not only that, right? You know, the most liberating time in your investment history is when you wake up and you realize that you don't have a crystal ball and no one else does either. That's when you become a great investor because then you build a portfolio that's robust enough to handle the face of uncertainty because all these things are concerned. 
they're not certain. And when you build a portfolio that's built on achieving your goals, you don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. It's that simple. Thank you, Jake, for writing in. Our next question is from Deborah on the Upper East Side. Deborah says, Ryan, I just turned 70 and I'm about to retire. I recently took a look at how much I'll have to start withdrawing from my IRAs and 401k. Between my Social Security and the money they're forcing me to take out, I'll have a higher income in retirement than I have right now while I'm working. Can they really make me withdraw that much? Sadly, Deborah, yes. And that's what we talked about earlier on the show today. Your retirement accounts are ticking tax time bombs. And this is why you want to plan for this stuff ahead of time. Now, I don't know if you're going to continue to work or you're going to stop working this year. But if you're still working, your money in the 401k that might be active, you may not have to take those distributions yet. So there's a couple things you might be able to do to alleviate it. But Bob, to me, this is why you need to plan for this stuff ahead of time. Because man, when it hits, you're kind of out of luck. You know, Rob, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, here you are. You're, you get to the point in your life where you've worked hard, you've accumulated all this wealth, and now it's time to enjoy it. And you find out the IRS wants it all back. I mean, it, 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 it's, there's nothing worse than that. But if you do some planning, right, you don't have to pay as much as they want you to pay. Only have to pay what's necessary. And there's so many different strategies you can apply to avoid the maximum taxation of your benefits. Yeah, and this is where it's a great time to do an audit just to look at where you can optimize on tax. Because again, yes, you're going to have to take those distributions, but you can also start to generate more tax free income in your regular savings accounts and brokerage accounts to offset that to what we talked about earlier in the show today. If you have any sort of charitable contributions, you can take them right out of the IRA distribution you're going to take. So my guess is, even though, Deborah, you do have this ticking tax time bomb, with a financial audit, I'm pretty sure we can find some places where we can help you save on tax and alleviate some of that burden. Right, right it's just like a client I worked with this week who came in to do some planning. Uh, they're a new client. It turned out they had insult to injury. Not only did that the pay the max on their 401k and their social security benefit, but then some insurance salesman put them into an annuity, took after-tax dollars, put it into an investment where now they're getting income that's taxable. And he said, Bob, why would anyone turn my tax-free money into taxable income? I said, I don't know, but I'm glad you're with me now. This won't happen going forward. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.